Hello, in this series I'll be giving you a beginner's guide to Eevee, the render engine in 2.8. There'll be several episodes. In this episode we're looking at how to get fairly realistic results and the basic settings you need to change in order to do that. This is a beginner's guide, but I'm assuming you've got some understanding of the user interface. And before starting it's important to understand that Eevee is a real-time renderer, so it's really useful, but it's not a realistic renderer. It does its best, but it is faking things. So first of all what I'm going to do is delete the default cube by selecting it and pressing delete. Shift A to add, so that's Shift A, add, and a monkey. I'm going to press Control 2 to give the monkey a subdivision surface, which you can see just there, and that smooths it out. And I'm going to right click and press Shade Smooth, so that gives it nice smooth shading. I'm going to go to Side View with 3 on my numpad, and just move it into a nice position so it looks like it's resting on a floor. Just there will do fine. Middle mouse button to go back to perspective view and shift A to add a plane. So we've got a floor that the monkey is sitting on. S to scale that up and there's a nice starting position. Now it's a good idea to get used to the workspaces. So at the top here we've got shading. So I'm going to click on shading and you can see it puts me in what's called look dev mode. And that gives a nice result but it doesn't really take into account the lighting that I'm using in the scene. So I'm going to change it to rendered which is the next one along. And now you can see it's using this light and it's not got an HDRI in the background. I do want to add one because you get nice realistic lighting and reflections if you use an HDRI. So that's basically an image in the background. I'll set that up now. So down here in the shader, I'm going to change it from object to world. So at the moment the world is gray and I can change the color here. But I don't actually want to change the color there. I want to add an HDRI image. So shift A, texture and an environment texture. Now if I plug that in, you'll get a purple result, and that means there's no image in my environment texture. So I'm going to open one up, and go to my HDR archive. You can press this button here, which will give you a view of your actual images. I've downloaded these from HDR Haven and other places. And the best ones to use when you're trying things out and testing things is a nice sort of gray colored one, because the colors do actually affect your scene. So if I choose this one, it will give my objects a very yellowy color. So a grey one like this is probably going to be suitable, or something like this, this old city center here. So I've chosen that one, and you can see the effect it has straight away on my scene. Everything's much brighter, the shadow's fairly soft, and the light is fairly evenly distributed across my monkey. So let's go back to our object option. At the moment I've got the floor selected, so I'll select my monkey and give that a new material, and that gives us the principled BSDF shader. I'm going to move this up a bit. I'm not going to go through all the settings here. I've got that in other videos. But what I will do is turn it into a metallic object or metallic material and change the color slightly so it's a bit more gray. So it looks like silver. I want to bring the roughness down as well so it's nice and shiny, somewhere around there. And that's what it looks like at the moment. So it's not bad, but it's not realistic still. There's a few settings we can change. And I'm going to go across to the render tab here in order to change a few settings. Actually, before I do that, I'll change the floor as well. So I'll click on the floor give that a new material, and maybe just bring the color down slightly to a sort of grayish color. Okay, so let's have a look at these settings. The first one on the list is ambient occlusion, so I'm going to tick that, and you can see a slight change there. So if I tick and untick, you can see that the cavities are filled in with some darkness. And that's quite nice, it does help to give a more realistic look. If I click on the disclosure arrow and change the distance, you'll be able to see that effect is increased. So if I bring it up to somewhere around there, that's probably where I'll want it for this particular scene. But let's bring it up higher and see what happens. You can see the effect that it's having, but it doesn't keep its realism at this point, in my opinion. It's a bit too dark around here, and we sort of lose clarity here somehow. So it's dark, but it should actually be light at that point. So you can sort of see the effect that it has. And when I move around, you can see that it is quite fake looking, especially around this ear. So watch out for that, try not to have your settings too high, have them at a point where it's helping the cavities to be more pronounced, but not too extreme so it doesn't look real. You can go for a very stylized look and have it quite high if you like, but at the moment for me in this particular scene, 1.76 is perfect. 1.76 is just fine. Okay, the next one on the list is Bloom. I will go through it quickly. If I tick that, you can see the highlight on the eye, just that highlight there has a bit of bloom, oh, and on the ear as well. The main settings for this is the threshold. So if I bring the threshold up, it makes less things bloomy or glowy. And if I bring the threshold down, you can see suddenly it 
creates lots of bloom all around the place. You have to be a bit careful with this. It can make things look a bit odd and unrealistic, but a little bit of bloom can help because it looks like an overexposed area in a camera. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out so you can see the light, which is just there. And I'm going to change this to a sun. So the lamp options are just here. And instead of a point light, I'll choose a sunlight. And you can now see the effects of the bloom. This sun is at the strength of 1000. So I'm going to change that to one. And now let's zoom in. And the more I increase this, the more highlights we'll get and the more bloom we will get. So the effect of bloom is very dependent on the lights you have in your scene. So I'm going to put that down to one again. And it is important to note that if you want realistic results, then you do have to think about your lighting as well as your texturing and render settings. So in this case, the lighting from my HDRI, if I look around the place, is up in the corner there. So it is actually the place where the sun is coming from, it just happens to be. But you do want to think about that if you're putting an extra light in your scene. Think about your HDRI that you have in the background and think about where the sun is positioned there and you might want to add to it with a sun lamp. So onto the other settings, let's go back to our render settings here. The next part you want to think about is screen space reflections. Let's tick on that and press the disclosure arrow. And you can see what happened in the scene straight away. It became more reflective. So here's the two. So initially, it's just using the HDRI, the background, to give us some sort of reflection or some sort of idea of the reflections. But when I put screen space reflections, it tries to take into account the other objects in the scene. And it doesn't do a bad job, but what you will notice is you'll get these sort of blocky looking effects around the place. If I turn off half res trace, that does help. So it makes them a bit smoother. And what can also help is the edge fading. Sometimes you put that up, it can sort of smooth out those areas, but you'll see that my reflections are slightly less real. You can see there, there's the floor and it's taking away the floor the more I put up edge fading. But that does help with some of these sort of blocky areas. So to put reflections in your scene, you will need the screen space reflections ticked. Also, if you've got any glass, you'll probably want refractions ticked as well. I'm going to go on to transparency in another episode. Let's continue down. Volumetrics I will talk about in another episode as well. Let's quickly talk about shadows. Down here we have soft shadows and hard shadows. In this particular case, it doesn't make a lot of difference and your shadow settings in your light will make a difference to this as well. With the light selected, if I click on the lighting tab, you can see there's a shadow option here. And I'll just quickly mention that you've got contact shadows there, which can help with that sort of ambient occlusion where objects meet each other. You can change the softness of this as well, because sometimes you can get slight errors right where they meet. So if I bring the softness down, you can see those slight glitches there. So put up the softness just a touch to about somewhere about three, which is a, which I think is the default. And that should help us with the contact shadows. So again, bear in mind the lighting and shadows are affected by your lights as well as the render scene settings here. So let's go down a little bit further. Indirect lighting, I will go through in another episode. Film, this is quite useful. If you want to take the background away, you can click on that transparent option there. And lastly, the color management. If I scroll down, at the moment it's filmic by default. That's probably the best option. Your renders will have more dynamic range, which means there's more light information for you to play with and generally it should look a bit more realistic. There is a look option here and you can change the contrast values. So if I put this to medium contrast, I think that's the default. If you want to go into something like Photoshop and edit your images, you probably want a low contrast so you can add the contrast yourself in another program. However, if your final image is straight from Blender, you might want to put a medium high contrast on perhaps if you want a little bit more of a contrasty image. For this scenario, I'm going to keep it at medium contrast. So let's quickly take a look what that looks like. If I press F12, that will give me my render. And that's quite a nice, realistic, smooth looking result there. We have enough of the floor in and the background for this to look nice and silver and the shadows look nice. So those are the basic settings and should help you on your way to getting more realistic renders in Eevee. In later episodes, I will go through bump maps, transparencies, even more realistic reflections and volumetrics. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.